Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Uh, Happy New Year. We are in now in 2021. Uh, I haven't been posting a lot of carburetor or carburetor LS videos, so I'm looking forward to get right back on it. We are jumping today into a video about fuel level and flooding on Holly carburetors, as a lot of you guys know. Hollies are known for two things. One is fuel leaks, and the second thing is flooding out, uh, particularly through the uh, boosters and the vent tubes. Uh, a lot of times, uh, it's a very simple problem, but it's complicated to get to the specifics if you don't know what you're looking at, which is what we're looking at today. Quick overview of how the system works. You've got a typical Holly fuel bowl like this, whether it's a side hung or center hung float like this one, it works exactly the same. Fuel comes into the bowl. As it's coming into the bowl, the, level, the float rises. As the float rises, it will start to begin to push against this needle and seat assembly until the little needle pushes against the seat itself, uh, causing fuel to stop. Pressure will build before the needle and seat. As the fuel level goes down, the pressure gets relieved into the bowl, and then the, as soon as the float reaches its maximum height again, it will close it, and the whole system just spends itself opening and closing the entire time. When the system is not working correctly, you're going to have fuel running through the needle and seat through a various different ways, and it's going to overfill the bowl. Once it overfills the bowl, you're going to have problems. So as you guys can see, we have a typical metering block right here. The fuel level usually sits right around this height right here so if you begin to have internal leaks into the fuel bowl and your level starts rising above this a couple things are going to happen first you're going to have uh, from the main well you're going to have fuel coming up uh, through the main feed this feed feeds directly into the boosters so as soon as the fuel level goes to this height Fuel is going to get immediately start running down the boosters and straight into the throat. That's where you're going to start seeing dripping down through the boosters and causing a rich condition. Uh, typically black smoke uh, or actually it won't even want to idle sometimes depending on how bad it is. The second stage of that, if it gets even worse, is that fuel will then travel all the way up. Not just here, all the way up through the top. And so it'll go through this little whistle. It'll travel through the whistle and then out through the vent tube, and it's just going to be pouring out gas from the top. A couple things will cause this. Uh, a couple things you guys might know and a couple things that you probably never thought of. The first thing you guys are going to want to do before you do anything else is clean out your air bleeds. You guys have no idea the kind of problems that arise if these air bleeds are clogged. A lot of times you'll have grime, uh, you'll have dirt, you'll have a bunch of debris inside of these tubes, inside of these holes, inside of the air bleeds that'll prevent it from running correctly. All you gotta do is spray a little bit of degreaser or a little bit of carb cleaner and then just go ahead and spray, spray it through with the pressurized straw and you can see that it just comes out through the side. You do that for all four, two per hole, basically. And just make sure to get it all out. What'll happen is if they're plugged, your engine's not gonna have any air to suck from and it's actually just gonna suck fuel by itself without the emulsion system running and you're gonna get raw fuel running into your engine and you won't even know where it's coming from because everything else is gonna check okay. But these are basically the silent killer. You gotta make sure these are always maintained, always clean, never block these off, the little air bleeds that are on top. It's very uncommon that those issues are going to arise, but if they do, just go ahead and look at that first before anything else. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is your fuel pressure. You want, Hollies really like to be anywhere from five PSI to six and a half PSI. No more than six and a half PSI. And the reason for that is the higher you go in the PSI, the harder it is for this needle to actually provide enough pressure against the fuel pressure going into the fuel bowl assembly. And if you go beyond six and a half PSI, you're going to start fighting and beating the needle and you're gonna start over, overflowing your fuel bowl, which will then cause all the issues we spoke about earlier. So if you don't have a fuel pressure regulator, go ahead and put one on. If you don't have a fuel gauge on your uh, somewhere on your fuel line, 
go ahead and put one on and make sure it's at the correct assembly before you start taking things apart. Make sure that everything is at the right fuel pressure and make sure that your air be bleeds are clean. The next thing you're going to look at is the actual needle and seat assembly. So like I said, I told you before, you use a needle and seat assembly to add fuel and, and block off fuel into your fuel bowl. Now this one is a good needle and seat assembly. You can tell that the O-ring is still really malleable. It's puffy. It actually has like a little bend up here. It extrudes the needle and seat assembly. I have another one that is basically just flat. It's a flat O-ring. You guys can see it's not malleable. This thing will do very little, if any, sealing whatsoever. And if this was inside your carburetor, you would have a ton of issues with overfueling uh, or fuel running everywhere, basically. This is not going to seal. The solution is obviously to go ahead and either replace your needle and seat, uh, or in this case, this actually was a newer needle and seat that had a bad O-ring. So you can actually buy the O-ring by itself. These O-rings are actually replaceable. If you can find an R03 O-ring that fits perfectly in the needle and seat and you should be able to replace it if the rest of the assembly looks good. Another issue they can have is on, especially ones that have been sitting in older carburetors for a while, maybe for a year or more. Or well, if, if the carburetor sat with fuel in it, you're gonna have issues with like the ethanol content sticking to the actual taper of the needle and seat and that'll prevent it from sealing as well a lot of times from a little bit of use and new fuel soaking it a little bit it'll dissolve a lot of the contaminants and it should be good to go again but you never know some people use mineral spirits to actually clean it up i've had really good luck with reviving these needle and seats by just leaving them in the carburetor with fuel uh, coming back later and then trying to mess with it and then a lot of times uh, these things will seal back up again with very little problems whatsoever as long as the o-ring is in good shape now the last thing you're going to want to look at is in the actual fuel bowl toward the middle of where this thing would sit right around here there is a sealing surface and on older carburetors that have old o-rings when you, as soon as this thing uh, runs out of fuel and it sits for a while the o-ring will actually stick to the outside walls of the ceiling surface and when it's time to actually get it running and going the rubber that is stuck to the walls will actually tear off and it'll get stuck to the walls so you're going to have issues with your fuel bowl you're going to go ahead and look inside and a lot of times you're going to be able to look right into the ceiling surface right in there and you're going to notice that you're going to have little black spots those black spots were the pieces of the old o-ring that basically will, don't work anymore so you're gonna what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna take off the needle and seat if it's in bad shape like this one is you're gonna go ahead and replace it if it's in a decent shape like this one is you can go ahead and replace the o-ring by itself and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and put the new o-ring you're gonna coat it with either a little bit of oil or gasoline and you're gonna stick it in here and normally you would just kind of like push it into its place but what i like to do is i like to actually spin it so it's actually going to run through the threads of the fuel bowl and then you're going to feel it it'll get really loose and then that'll be in the in-between area between the upper threads and the ceiling surface so right here it's actually in between so to get to the ceiling surface you push it a little bit and then you start threading on the top that's when you use a hex nut that you use for the needle and seat and then you can either do it by hand preferably and if it gets tough, like this one is, because it's probably dirty, you're gonna wanna use a correct wrench. When you use a correct wrench, you're gonna wanna go ahead and go gently, go smooth, and you're just gonna keep going and you're gonna almost bottom it out until you can't thread it in anymore. And then you're gonna go ahead and twist it back out, pull it completely out, clean off the O-ring and look inside. Hopefully the new O-ring scrubbed off all the garbage and the garbage just fell inside the, the bowl and you can just basically blast the rest of it off a lot of times the o-ring will be fine after you scrub the inside with it uh if not then you can just go ahead and grab another r03 o-ring throw it on the needle and seat and then put it back on and you should be good to go these issues are very annoying to deal with especially if you don't know what you're looking for 
But as long as you can pretty much follow this general idea of how everything's supposed to work and how you're supposed to go, go about uh, taking care of this system, you should have no problems whatsoever and all of your carburetors should be uh, basically running the way they're supposed to. You guys have any questions, go ahead and post them down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.